Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I want to add a new dimension to our activities even though we still seem to be working on getting to orbit properly. Uh, there's no reason why we can't start uh, prototyping some crewed vehicles. We're not putting Kerbals in just yet but at least testing out to make sure that something might work before picking up these contracts. In particular fly crewed craft to 350 meters per second it says crewed aircraft or rocket so uh, yep uh, just go past the speed of sound basically and uh, get back safely I, I don't know return home I hope just means uh, splashing down somewhere because if it means Cape Canaveral that's gonna be a problem but uh, yeah uh, we could just do that and then also launch them into a suborbital flight above the Carmen line a hundred kilometers not even fully space yet as far as the 130 kilometer line so yeah we could do this as well so uh, yeah no reason to not start working on those uh, those two could probably done on this be done on the same flight though maybe uh, if we do this one we could catch another one that goes a little bit faster I don't know uh, but uh, probably we'll be going straight for both of these but instead of starting the three-year clock ticking just yet, let's look at the situation in the VAB and see what kind of craft we can cook up. Something simple and something obviously with a probe core as well, just in case, especially for testing purposes. As far as crude pods are concerned, all we've got is this Beach Bonanza cabin, which probably we shouldn't use, and this conic cockpit for experimental planes. Now this cockpit doesn't say anything about uh, not working on the top of a rocket. Uh, it uh, has ejection seats, which is good. I mean, I assume. I mean, I've got uh, VNG parachutes anyway, so could do that. Very unfortunate texture. Not really. It's not gonna make for a very pretty vehicle any way you look at it. But uh, yeah, let me work with this, and uh, we'll need parachutes, uh, which we have. We can, uh, I guess, cannot be a, okay. So we've unlocked it. It just can't be the first part. Possibly we should try and toss up a goo container and retrieve it first. Uh, I mean, a biological sample capsule. Yep. So uh, yeah, maybe that's the first thing. Uh, one issue we have is that we don't have the heat shields yet. We are researching them, but we have not finished researching them. Oh, well, we've got this procedural heat shield, but it says non-RP zero. So uh, we're researching the RP0 heat shields. So one question will be the survivability of the pod uh, in the case where we have no heat shield. And uh, so, well, we're not going that fast and we've seen probes survive, but it's still a dodgy business. We'll probably be using this Able Delta avionics, avionics package to, for our main control at the top. Anyway, let me build it and then show you. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is Conic cockpit parachutes, as you can see, this is all a, a sophisticated spacecraft, uh, well, briefly a spacecraft, it might not even make space, actually, but it's got the little thrusters, as you can see, uh, configured to nitrous oxide properly, okay, and we've got two goo containers, able delta avionics package, able to take eight tons, there is no uh, indication about the conic cockpit, I guess as long as there's a Kerbal in, it's got the avionics for whatever you like to put on, but uh, since we're not going to be putting a Kerbal in, I've had to be a little bit more careful. We have this guidance unit that can carry 20 tons, so the total avionics capacity is 28 tons, which we are under. Uh, I'll put the fairings on in a sec so we can verify that as well. Uh, this is the... Oh, no, not that. This... Oh yes, it is that. Uh, is the coup de grace. This is the lead ballast. <laughs> in fact, if you note, this is uh, 0.8 tons. And in fact, it's half the mass of the entire spacecraft. The entire goal of the lead ballast is, of course, to pull the center of mass down to about here. And so preventing it from flipping over in a direction where the pointy nose is going to be first and the parachutes will burn up. So that's what that's for. And we've also got a uh, little uh, separation motors here. And that's to slow ourselves down on the way down. Also to provide an abort possibility. So there is a configured abort sequence where... Uh, we have uh, this decoupling and these all firing at the same time. Here they fire four at a time. Uh, if they fire all at the same time, they have a thrust weight ratio of about four, which is not much. It's more for a pad abort than anything else. 
Uh, so yeah, it's not going to be able to handle it once the rocket is at its uh, maximum thrust to weight ratio. But altogether, not bad, I think. Uh, we've got some amenities like thrusters and all. Lots of nitrous oxide, 41,000. So that should be good, maybe. Alright, let's package that up. Okay, oh, we've got some uh, goo containers sticking out there. I've had to uh, manually do the shape of it because otherwise it uh, has problems. So, yeah, okay, so that's how it looks now. Now, uh, there is only one stage and only one rocket. This is because we want this to be affordable, let's say. Uh, so we're going with the RD-103 with its, uh, with its ethanol and oxygen. So that's all there. Yep, highly pressurized as planned. We've got fins, sort of redstone fins, not that big, uh, but uh, they're there. You can see the mass and center of lift as as they are. Uh, yes, we do have a thrust weight ratio that uh, would not be acceptable for crewed flight today. Uh, no, it's nothing close to what they had on the Redstone or the Atlas rockets, which uh, maxed out much higher than that. So uh, actually, we're being very kind to our Kerbonauts. And uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, we've built. Uh, it's going to be 21 days only, so it's not a bad deal. Uh, it's actually fairly cheap, as you can see. Um, but we are not going to have any Kerbal in. Let's be very clear about that. I'm going to save this and build. Uh, build. Okay, build vessel. Okay, we're just going to have one on the queue. We have orbital things to do for now. I don't know how fast this is going to go. And this is just a test, it's not going to fulfill any contracts. So we'll see. Okay, let us head on out and see what we've got queued. So next up is a capable 3B, and let me just get on with that. Okay, as it was last time, the main question is whether all the engines will light. Uh, that's After that, all I have to do is remember to aim for above 150 kilometers instead of 130 kilometers which I had done in the previous episode. We did get to orbit in the previous episode, we just didn't get high enough for them. Okay, so uh, let's see. Here we go. Okay. All right, we're off. Wow, that feels heavy. wonder why the UDMH and N204 burning Aero AJ-10s seem to have such a sort of a bluish flame at the sea level or they seem to have their vacuum flame here even surely somebody would have figured that I would try to use an upper stage engine as a base stage engine anyway okay looking good so far we are past the speed of sound Everything is nominal. Okay, booster set in two seconds. Okay, booster set. Alright, they're off. Okay, eight seconds to these this out, and uh, we'll want smart ASS off by that point, so let's go to a good standby pitch. Okay, that'll be good. Okay, off and SAS. And set. And ignition. Okay, Vanguard is ignited. Okay, looking good. Obviously, I'm aiming for an apoapsis of above 150 kilometers right now. Uh, so we want this side to be above 150 kilometers, and then once we uh, boost at periaps uh, at apoapsis, I mean, uh, once we complete the burn as normal, the opposite side will become our real apoapsis, and that'll be much higher. Obviously, it'll just burn out the rest of the delta V. But as long as this side's above 150, we should be fine, and well above 150, hopefully. 
Okay, getting ready to activate RCS in preparation for stability during staging. Okay, RCS on. Set. And ignition. And fairing set. To the Airbees, the XASR sound a little bit off to you somehow. Sounds like their sound is not quite right. I don't know. They're not sounding their usual selves. Doesn't seem to be able to hold our heading very well. Wonder why. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay, here we go. Alright, still go for orbit. Our ultimate periapsis should be about 179 kilometers. Why, wait, wait. We're not go for orbit. Have I miscalculated? Or... Wait a minute. Uh, oh, there's a delay between this and that. I'm worried now. Ah. Okay, hold on. Let's, let me take RCS off. How did that happen? And we've got a sound glitch here, obviously. Um, I don't know what went wrong there. We definitely had enough for orbit. But somehow... I don't know, something went wrong. Don't know what happened. Is it stopped? No, it's still making this noise. Uh, well, we, we'll have to, at Apoapsis, try that trick with the nitrous oxide. Hmm, very unpleasant sound it's making right now. It's still firing, isn't it? Yeah, it's still trying to fire. Here, let me shut down. Okay. Um, yeah, it's still trying to fire. I think... I don't know. There, there seemed to be some math error here. Maybe it's my math error. Maybe it's it's math error, but... Oh, but what if I don't have connection? Oh, this is going to be bad. I don't see a connection point until South Africa. Okay, we have connection. Uh, now, which way do I have to go? Jeez. Um, RCS on. Okay, this way. You really need to roll a bit. Uh, I still don't think there's gonna be enough. Nope. Probably not even uh, good enough to pass 130. We're adding a bit to our apoapsis as well because we've passed apoapsis. This is uh, this is a real shame. I mean, I thought we had it. 
I mean, I thought we had it like up to about a couple of seconds away from orbit. I don't know, maybe I did some math wrong on the way up. Okay, well, point is, we didn't make it. Definitely still says we haven't made it yet. The next attempt will be with the spin-stabilized Nick 5 and we'll see how that works. Well, it's no good uh, not having a orbital rocket queued up at any point, so I'll add another one of those capable 3Bs. Yeah, I know, trying the same thing over and over and over again, but Remember, it's not the exact same thing. The way it flies, the way I pilot it, does make a difference. And so, yeah, same rocket, different profile, if you will. So it's not quite the same. We have a year and 245 days. Now, once we get the new technology, uh, I, I think I can build a rocket at that point that can handle it. But uh, oh, well, let's get this uh, science data from space around Earth contract. We'll be doing the goo container anyway. You know what though, I, I, I will make a minor change. Clearly we've been having extra, extra fuel at the end. Extra, I mean, the nitrous oxide. So maybe we can reduce this just a bit more. Don't know what effect that'll have on our delta V really. But uh, then we also have this tank. And we can probably go to just flat, let's say that. Doesn't have much effect, does it? A eh, couple of meters per second here and there, that's all. The one thing we could do is, in here we've got those sergeants. And we could put fewer than eight of them, I guess. Uh, eight might have been a little bit overkill. Uh, it's been working well with the Vanguard, so I don't want to mess with it. We'll just uh, go with this version. And I'm going to build one more of these. Okay, here we go with the launch of a Nick 5 on June 23rd, 1953. Whoa, uh, sorry I wasn't recording, but uh, when physics kicked in, the rocket had a weird wobble. And you can see it's slightly off to the side right now. What's up with that? It's got four launch clamps on this thing and it's a little bit off to the side. I really don't like that. But it's here and it uh, should be able to control itself sort of, at least for the beginning. So uh, we'll, we'll proceed on that uh, inauspicious note. I'll get my distance and uh, yeah, we'll try it out. Hopefully nothing else was kicked loose. These, I keep forgetting to change that up. That should be right there. Okay. So right, once more, we are doing what we do every time, trying to make orbit. Here we go. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Booster set. Okay, they are off. Okay, well, here we go. Once again, we want to get it pretty high. Lots of time to apoapsis for the second stage. Uh, keep it to 50 degrees. Leave it there. Spit of delay. I'll activate RCS now. Yeah, we've got nitrous oxide use. Gotta switch that off. SAS, SEP, and ignition. Okay, ignition is good. Okay. Let's have. Smarty SS, try this. Okay, uh, looks like we're in business. Okay, well, I'll not overstate our prospects here. It really depends on whether I can get this orbit right, and I'm not sure. 
We're not uh, with an apoapsis in space yet. I'll have to keep it angled up to some degree. How much is the question I... I'm not clear about. Could plot it ahead of time if I had the time. I don't think I do. I've got 10 seconds. We just pointed in a good direction. Let's call it that. Attitude Jets should be able to hold it through this. Okay, and so... Yep, let us set. Rotation is going, and ignition. Oh, something exploded back there. That's nothing to do with us right now. Time to wipe laps is going up now. Okay, now if we could decouple and ignite at apoapsis, that'd be great. Uh, the issue is communication. Well, it looks like we will have communication at apoapsis. And we have the, these rockets to sell our, our fuel down, so... As long as we don't start deviating, which I think spin stabilization is supposed to prevent, I guess we can just wait 50-odd seconds or close to it. We're actually tilted a bit high. We don't really want to be tilted up. But, uh, yeah. We'll take it in about 40 seconds. Well, we don't have to wait all the way. It takes about a minute to burn the stage. So, how about at 30 seconds to apoapsis? Okay, set. And ignition. Okay, now spinning the opposite direction, and uh, we are going. Don't know if we'll get to orbit or not, but we're going. It all depends on whether I picked the right angle to be at. Might not have been. Gonna have one high apoapsis, that's for sure. It's the rest of it that I don't know about. Nope. Nope, didn't pick the right angle. Should have been shallower. Less than 15 degrees. Uh, say 10-ish, maybe 5-ish even. Oh well. Okay. Well. Spin stabilization. T well, spin stabilization is fine. Uh, I still have a lot to learn, obviously. Oh, this one's got to be coming back down. Well, here we go again. Let's queue up another Nick 5. Yep, I don't see any reason to make changes to this. Everything worked okay. The only change is the staging is wrong. Uh, not those guys. No, the boosters, right. Otherwise. Uh, things worked to our parameters, it's just uh, we need to get the angle right. I think I'm gonna move the Nick up. I think it has a better chance of fulfilling the contract than the Capable 3 at this point. Yeah, but we'll uh, proceed with the Lofty 1 test first. And for those wondering, there's still 30 days until Basic Orbital Rocketry will save us. <laughs> I mean, will totally save us, we'll be able to launch things much easier at that point. Oh, uh, so, uh, they actually give us the select crew dialogue here like this. Okay, empty the cockpit and then launch. You know, they should just make us uh, put the crew in ahead of time instead of giving us that dialogue and simulate the time the crew needs to train for the mission, right? I mean, I think, maybe. Anyway, we're, we're going straight up with this. We're just going to see how high it goes and whether it can survive the way back down. That's the great plot of this whole thing. Probably don't even need SAS for that. But uh, here we go. Oh, and we also want to know if the parachutes burn up or something like that. Okay. Engine ignition. And... 
Okay. Uh, I think abort. Abort. What happened? This is highly irregular. So apparently I don't have control. Even though I have... Why don't I have control? Well, I better recover this before it flops over. <laughs> we got uh, we got uh, five science recovery of a vessel that survived the flight. That's sort of like it, it is sort of like was it Redstone one or whichever one that uh, uh, got an inch off the launch pad and then just sat there. Yeah, it, it was. We're we're being very realistic here. Unexpected real, unexpectedly realistic even. Um, yeah, I don't know about this. I don't know why that happened. Uh, possibly there was a message I missed. And uh, I will find out during editing. But let me take a look at the rocket. Well, it certainly says avionics okay, but let me do Kerbal a favor and remove the the cockpit. Uh, I'll make the this the root part instead. I don't know if that makes any difference whatsoever. But uh, yeah, let's take those off. Okay. Here we go, that doesn't affect avionics at all, right Kerbal? Because it's it's just payload, it's just payload Kerbal. Don't get confused. I don't know. It may just want to prevent me from doing this. Yep, uh, maybe, maybe... It doesn't say anything. I'm reading the description, it doesn't say that you can't use this for rockets. Yeah, and we do have communication. This is integrated on the 300 kilometers, always on. <sighs> okay, well, that's the best I can do. Let's try this again. Save, no Kerbal, and build. I'm going to move the Lofty ahead of the capable 3B. But not before the nick. Let's try the nick again. Okay, well we're only 19 hours before we complete basic orbital rocketry, so that'll be nice and blessed relief after all this mess. Okay, well, let's see if I can get this right this time. Uh, get a good distance away. Engines on. And up we go. Okay, booster set. Alright, they're off. Obviously I'm going steeper than before. The reason is because I wanted to hit 150 kilometers before we switch to the the XASR stages. Okay, getting ready to activate RCS. Let's go to 55 this time. Okay, RCS on. Uh, that off, and say us on, set, and a ignition. Ignition is good. Okay. Uh, have we got it? It's trying mightily to get the pitch down to 52. I don't know if we'll quite make 150 kilometers here, but I think we can probably flatten out and just go on the next stages. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go 8. We did 15 last time after all. Okay, looks stable. Alright, spin stabilization time. go. I have no idea why that always explodes, but okay. Uh, 
Okay, that got us beyond 150 kilometers. Uh, it's still making the sound, which I don't understand. Um, and is very unpleasant. Our pitch is about 10 degrees compared to 20 degrees from uh, last time, so maybe that'll be alright. Okay, let's just go for it. Set. And ignition. Spinning the other way now. And again, the reason I do that is to help ensure that the fuel doesn't have any problems. Well, it's really shaking now. How it shakes the rest of the world, I have no idea. Whoa, what just happened? Really? Really? 85 kilometers? And what was with the huge camera spin? <sighs> Kerbal. 85 kilometers. Well, maybe 5 degrees, maybe 4 degrees, something. Uh, if you're wondering why I don't do 0 degrees, is because we might not hit 150 kilometers before passing apoapsis in that case. Uh, we have to have the time to apoapsis to complete the burn. Uh, obviously, once we get to this stage, it uh, goes wildly out of control, but our only chance to control the pitch is before this stage, with the previous stage, so... Yeah. Okay, well, here we go again. Right, well, I'll just have one more of these, thanks. I've moved it up. Uh, technically, we will have much better engines very quickly now. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go try that again first thing, and then we'll, uh, actually, it's possible that the Lofty will complete before that anyway, but uh, that's our priority. Let's go for it. So, Lofty 1 is complete, but I'm not going to roll it out. We're going to aim for the Nick 5 as our next launch. I want to get this done. Okay, here we go. I'm getting worryingly close to the RAM limit here. So that's another problem. And uh, we've seen quite a lot of lag and such on flights. Anyway, but I want to get this done. So SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, getting ready for booster sap. Boosters away. Alright, very good. Okay. Getting ready for separation. I'll hold it at 57 degrees this time. Uh, we'll have smart ASS off, RCS on. And set. And ignition. Ah. Ah. The AJ 10 did not light. Well, not too much I can do. Just point up and go. Yeah, let's just go. We'll, we'll point in this direction and hope for the best. We don't have enough for orbit or anything, but uh, maybe we'll take out another... Is there another altitude contract? I don't know. 600 kilometers it looks like. I think we can go about 600 kilometers. We could have done it with the other ones if I had just paid attention to them. Okay, well, still making that noise. Set. Still getting lag all over the place. Ignition.
Yeah, again, we're not going to make it to orbit, but we might make it to a decent altitude. Okay, well, let's go for that uh, contract. Oh, uh, we could do uh, the scientific data from space thing. Uh, explore and probe, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to do it like this with the zero thing, but uh, we'll probably eventually have to, but we don't have to do it this time. We'll fill the 600 kilometer contract instead of the science contract here. Okay, we got that one. I don't see a new one popping up, they usually don't, so I'm just gonna let this be and head back to the Space Center. So I suppose I'm gonna catch a lot of flack for having such a low success rate getting to orbit this late in the series but uh, and probably for trying to continue building these Nick 5s but uh, yeah I don't know I'm a stubborn sort of fellow uh, well I'll have my revenge I've got new rockets new engines uh, these fellows here I think I think bigger and better things are ahead a genus stage there yep yep I will plug on and I'll say thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time